Welcome back, whiskey fans, and a happy new year. This is the first review of 2023, and I've decided to start the year on a little bit of a high. This review is going to be an Isla whiskey, it's a Kilhoman, and it's cask strength. This is going to be good. So this one here is the 2021 release of Kilhoman Maca Bay Cask Strength being reviewed in 2023. So you did hear me right, this is technically a couple of years old now, but it is a fairly recent release because the release of this was delayed by somewhat of a global health crisis which you may have heard about. So this whiskey here is not the first time that Kilhoman have done a cask strength version of their Maca Bay release. For anyone that doesn't know, and I'm sure you all do, Maca Bay is the standard expression from Kilhoman. It's predominantly matured in bourbon casks. It's peated to, I believe, 50 ppm, so it's really quite peaty. And they use the peated malt from Port Ellen for this one. Hopefully, by the time this review goes out, there might still be some of this available, because it didn't sell out for quite a while. I bought this uh, a few days after it came out, and with nearly 19,000 bottles of this being made available by Kilhoman, it seems like they're doing a reasonable effort to try and combat the availability problems that plague pretty much everything Isla these days. As for a price, I paid £62 for this one, and as you'd expect, as always from Kilhoman, it's natural colour, it's non-chill filtered, hasn't got an aid statement, but it comes in at a very respectable ABV of 58.3. So pretty standard packaging for a Kilhoman, apart from they've put a, a few little details. The fact that it's cask strength limited edition. And if you look closely, you've actually got a little bit of Isla wildlife on the box there in what appears to be an orange flat cap, which I don't think is a reference to me, but maybe. So bit of blurb on the back, 58.3% is cask strength Maca Bay. So you know pretty much everything you need to know there, don't you? Standard Kilhoman bottle with a coin. Nice presentation as always. I don't think there's really too much on here that we need to cover. If you're interested, you can have a look on the Kilhoman website or any of the online retailers, all the information is there. But it really is just a stronger version of Maca Bay. And they have actually stated that, that it's not a different cask recipe, it's the same casks go into this as what would go into a normal batch of the, the regular Maca Bay, just without the added water. So as for the cask makeup of this one, if you just have another look at the front of the box, they've actually given us a little bar chart diagram thing there, and it actually tells us the blue is bourbon and the cream colour is sherry. So we're looking at about 90% bourbon casks gone into this, with a few sherry casks thrown in there. Now in the past with Kilhoman sort of standard normal releases, I have tended to prefer the vintage releases, because until a few years ago they all tended to be 100% bourbon matured. Whereas Maca Bay had, has always had a small percentage of sherry casks thrown in there, and it's not an obvious sherry, but I think that compared to the vintage releases, the Maca Bay, that, that small amount of sherry does round things off and make it a little bit more sanitised and a little bit more easy drinking, and I've tended to prefer the 100% bourbon matured, slightly edgier vintage releases. But with that very small percentage of sherry, it should still be very good. So let's pop the cork, which is pretty good cork to be fair. Nice solid but spongy piece of natural cork there. It's not one of those horrible pressed wood shaving corks. No bits dissolving where it's been stored laying down. So Kilhoman Maca Bay 2021 edition, 20, late 2022 release on the nose. So everything you would expect from a cask strength Isla whiskey, especially it's got all of those trademark notes that you always get from Maca Bay or any of those predominantly bourbon matured Kilhoman whiskies. 
So lovely sweetness, but sweet and ashy. Like wood smoke, charred bourbon cask. Slightly farmy, getting that farmy peatiness coming through on the nose that you always get on a Kilhoman. There's also quite a salinity to this one. Slightly salty, coastal, bracing, slightly briny on the nose. Quite lactic, creamy. There's like a, a sweet vanilla custard note to this, as well as a, a little bit of a note of like lemon fondant, which I think are always, they're notes that I always get on like a Macca Bay or something like that from Kilhoman. Excellent oakiness on the nose, providing some really good body and a little bit of texture. I think you can tell that there's a little touch of sweet fruity sherry on the nose of this one, but it's really barely present and I think more than anything else, like I said before, it just serves to round off some of the edges slightly. Lovely, complex, robust, hearty whiskey though. Lots of that sweet, creamy lemon, custard, vanilla, wood smoke, dirty, farmy peat. Really is lots of peat on the nose of this one. So, already, fantastic whiskey. Let's see how it tastes. So, colour of that one. We know it's natural, because it always is from Kilhoman. And just look at how clear that is. Not is in lack of haze, but so pale, definitely a naturally presented whiskey, exactly as it should be. As for the palate, I think the first thing that strikes me on this one is the oak. There's an excellent oak eat in this, and again it's like a charred, ashy bourbon oak. Also an excellent maltiness to this one, you can really taste the barley that's gone into it. Now this isn't one of Kilhoman's 100% homegrown Isla barley releases. It is made from barley from the industrial maltings at Port Ellen, but you can really tell that the specification that Kilhoman use for their barley, they're putting some really good barley into this, and it really shows. It's going to have one more sip. More of that sweet and creamy lemon note, so very similar to what I had on the nose. A little bit of lime, lemon lime, vanilla custard, a little bit of butterscotch on the palate, as well as some more of that farmy peat, and a little bit of a woody licorice note. As for the finish, I'm going to say long, bordering on very long. Excellent intensity to this one, as you'd expect from anything from Kilhoman, especially a cask strength Kilhoman. And on that finish, I'm getting lots of that dry peatiness, contrasted really nicely with that sweet maltiness. Excellent complexity and balance throughout. So, in a way, this is a very, very easy review for me, because I think it's exactly like Kilhoman and Maca Bay, but stronger. So if you love Kilhoman and Maca Bay, then you're going to love this. It's the same thing, just with extra intensity, extra body, extra finish. It really is just Kilhoman and Maca Bay turned up to 11. Also, and I think it's important to cover this, seeing as this is going to be a reasonably young whiskey, because Kilhoman, it's only re reasonably recently, recent years, that have started to release anything like a 10-year-old whiskey. So they are still a newish distillery, mostly releasing youngish stuff, to be fair, as almost all of Isla is. But despite the assumed young age of this one, and I think there's nothing in this one to say, suggest that it is old, or extremely old. It's it's a young, punchy whiskey, exactly how I'd want a Macca Bay to be, but it's absolutely drinkable at full strength. And to Kilhoman's credit, because they are, at the moment, until some of the other stories come online and start making their whiskey available, because there are new projects popping up on Isla as there is everywhere else, at the moment Kilhoman are still kind of the new guys on Isla, but I think this is just as good as anything from Ardbeg or Lagavulin or Lafroig or Port Charlotte. It's really earned its place on Isla. Also, another thing that I really like about this whiskey is that I think that it's a whiskey of excellent contrasts. You've got lots of sweetness, 
but also that ashy side. It's a very fruity whiskey, but also with that charred wood smoke note. On one hand, it's quite a bright whiskey, but it's also got that dirty, farmy peatiness. It's got that lactic, creamy quality, but contrasted really well with the dry salinity, which, because it is so well done, as you'd expect from Kilhoman, really helps the balance and complexity. Comparing this one to some of its stable mates over on Isla, sort of cask strength versions of standard Isla whiskies. I've got to compare it to that Bunnerhaven 12 cask strength. Now, I got some flack for saying that the Bunnerhaven 12 cask strength was unnecessary and overpriced, shall we say. And I still stand by that. But I think when I brought out my review of that 12-year-old cask strength Bunner, a lot of people seem to take offence to my views on that. And I think that a lot of them probably just assumed that I had a problem with the ABV, and it's not that at all. In my opinion, Bunnerhaven 12-year-old is already absolutely fine. It's probably about as good as it can be at that age, at 46.3%. I think that with that, and I haven't had this year's 12-year-old cask strength release from Bunnerhaven, but the initial one, I thought that if anything, that extra strength really just served to bring out some rough edges that weren't there in the 46.3 general release. And I just really didn't feel like, especially with the big jump in price, I didn't feel like that any of us were getting great value out of that Bunner 12 cask strength. A handful of percent added to the ABV for around about double the price. In my opinion, I still think that one is questionable value. And I've absolutely got to mention the other big boy of Isla at cask strength, the Laphroaig 10 cask strength. Very, very popular release with myself as well as most Isla fans. I think that with the Laphroaig 10 cask strength release, that extra ABV is it's the complete opposite verdict to the Bunnerhaven. I think that with the Laphroaig 10 cask strength, because their official bottling at 40% is so weak, it's really far too weak to appreciate that big, ballsy style. So, it's no secret, I've said this a dozen times already, I think that the Lefroy 10 cask strength, even at its current price, because it's creeped up a little bit, it's about £75 a bottle now, it's a bit pricey, but if you want a good Lefroy, you're not going to get it at 40%. So, the cask strength release from Lefroy is definitely the one to get, in my opinion. So where do we stand with this Kilhoman? The standard stuff is already at 46%, so it's a similar ABV to what we get the standard Bunhaven from. So in a way you might expect that this isn't a huge improvement. You're looking at, what is that, 12.3% improvement on the ABV. Maybe not necessary. I think it is. I think that the fact that this whiskey is so much better than the standard 46% release, even at such a young age, is a huge testament to Kilhoman, and it shows that they really know what they're doing and that they're making fantastic whiskey. If anything, I think that the extra strength on this one, rather than bringing out harshness as I think it did on the Bunnerhaven, I think with this one it brings out extra sweetness and body and just improves on that standard bottling. And I also think that the price is very fair. You're paying about an extra £15 for this one on top of what you'd normally pay for the, the Macchio Bay release, which I think is it's bang on, really. You're paying about an extra pound for each additional 1% on the ABV. So yeah, I think that this stuff is absolutely amazing. It takes a whiskey that's already phenomenal and it improves it in just about every way in a very necessary and meaningful way and for a reasonably moderate increase in price so yeah absolutely love it let me know what you thought of this one if you've had it and what you think of Kilhoman as I said hopefully there will still be some of this available for anyone that wants it and hopefully there'll be a 20 <laughs> who knows what year they'll put on it but hopefully there'll be another one of these released next year because I would definitely buy this again. Thanks for watching, and cheers.